Hi, welcome everyone to Emerging Issues, Part A and B Resource Trends and Using RWHA App Funds Efficiently by Saving Time and Money. Um, I'm Jesse Thomas and I'm presenting with Aubrey and Onelia. I think you're going to find this to be a very stimulating and potentially transformative uh, case study. The learning objectives today are to learn about programmatic and infrastructure supports needed to design and implement automated end-to-end -end eligibility determination and claims processing. Explore the use of information technology to reduce manual effort to save time and costs. Understand how to assess data quality and consistency issues that directly impact fiscal workflow and implement this kind of assessment in your own programs. And presenters will provide guidance on the pitfalls and lessons learned on how to avoid them to those regions interested in replication. So today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, where we came from, where are we today, some future goals and vision, uh, some lessons learned, and we're going to wrap up. Um, on our end, um, I work at a company called RDE Systems, who's been specializing in HIV data systems now for 15 years. And so you're going to see a synthesis of some principles and lessons learned, uh, some replications from across the country, um, across many different kinds of programs in HIV and importantly, uh, across many different stakeholder types. So there's lots of different users and stakeholder types. And as you'll see, it's very important to try to include as many stakeholder perspectives throughout the life cycle of an initiative like this. Um, we've got over 30 years in public health background, 15 years in Ryan White, CDC and HOPWA. Over 700 agencies have used our software. There's over 20,000 provider CBO and DOH users and uniquely over 13,000 consumer and patient users across the country. About 250,000 patient records have been managed and security and privacy is just such an important part when you handle HIV sensitive protected health information. And so the county and RDE have um, been certified under FedRAMP uh, government program, which is excellent government um, certification program for HIV security and privacy for health information. And also on top of that, uh, something pretty unique. It's a zero knowledge encryption that encrypts all the sensitive identifiers with decryption keys that we as the technology partner don't have. So uh, this is a very powerful um, data protection that really doesn't exist out there anywhere else. And we think it's very important to protect uh, sensitive information to the highest standard. In terms of dollars and cents, over a billion dollars has been managed through eCompass. That's the system you'll see. Um, also very uniquely is over 300 million uh, provider data points exchanged electronically. This could be with EMRs, this could be other client level data systems. And in this case, this is with a third party administrator in the county's IT department. Across the country, over 800,000 hours have been saved of this double and triple data entry. Um, and that's equivalent of 400 FTEs, which are more productive and doing meaningful work than double and triple data entry and unnecessary paperwork. Uh, we also help with some grant funding and you're going to see that uh, one of the uh, capacity development projects was leveraged for this uh, this effort and um, we've helped bring in some of this funding uh, also innovation is a trend that you'll see today a theme and we've replicated um, some projects and some principles from special projects of national significance an excellent HRSA program for those of you who've never used it i recommend looking into their notice of funding opportunities we're also very transparent about what we do. There's been over 75 publications and we're advocates of human-centered participatory design so that uh, the humans take the first priority in any technology project. There's other uh, interesting disseminations happening at this conference. You can uh, see here, just search online um, to see other uh, topics related if you're interested. And this is something near and dear to my heart. We've got the ending the HIV epidemic strategy and um, our contribution is to raise awareness to reduce the administrative burden. Time is our one finite non-renewable resource. So any way that we can um, free people up, free their minds up, free their time up to focus on clients and patients and quality improvement, the better. So, um, and that also is meant to reduce staff stress, burnout and turnover in our very stressful world of, of operating to end the epidemic during a pandemic. Also, we can think creatively and transform some of these compliance or reporting burdens into visual uh, tools to help empower people 
um, even non-data folks uh, with uh, strong data uh, to help uh, make a difference in their programs. And we want to look at the right data and the right tools. That means data quality is a very important theme throughout all of this. Timely, complete, accurate data is essential for all kinds of initiatives. Uh, we also want the data and the information to be actionable, something that someone can look at visually, click on, see who's falling out of care, for instance, and take action. And the tools themselves must be use, useful and usable. And that means user friendliness is very important. We don't want these systems to be barriers to folks. One of the approaches that we've followed is uh, one of my childhood heroes, Bruce Lee. And he says, absorb what is useful, discard what is useless, and add what is specifically your own. So the Tampa EMA was able to uh, look at reference models across the country and really craft something very unique uh, for themselves. And that's been a very uh, enlightening and fruitful process to, to make something very tailored, very bespoke to their needs. Now we're actually gonna do a little bit of an interactive poll. These um, pre-recorded virtual sessions are hard to be interactive, so, but we're gonna try our best. This is a, to a polling tool that you can use. Uh, if you just take your iPhone out and take a, just point the camera at the screen, you can click on the link, or you can join e2polls.com slash Tampa, or go to e2polls and put the Tampa code in. This is something that you can take as we go along, and basically a, a, a little um, a message will pop up on your phone. You'll be able to take a little miniature poll, and the presenters at the end of this will be able to see your comments, will be able to see your questions, and uh, that will help our Q&A period. And this is a very unique tool. It's free for anybody who wants to use it, who serves the Ryan White community. And uh, we also wanna take this time to thank the Hillsborough County Healthcare Services team. They've been excellent to work with, the program, the IT, everybody's been really wonderful to work with. I wanna also give a special thanks to the RDE team who've uh, put a lot of effort into this project. I think you'll, you'll see a lot of their thoughtfulness in this. And we want to thank HRSA for supporting these kinds of projects and um, uh, helping to extend and expand the, the types of impact that these uh, programs can have. Um, as you take the poll, if you, you can take it at your own pace. It's very short. We just want to know what funding sources uh, you must report to, um, any challenges or headaches that you have with billing or data exchange. And then there's an open whiteboard um, message that you can just um, contribute to as you go along. If you see something valuable or uh, that you want to make a comment on, um, again, this helps with the interactivity. So feel free to use that whiteboard, submit as many as you like. You can leave that whiteboard slide open throughout the duration. And um, all right, I think we can get going now. So I, I'd like to turn this over to um, Aubrey, who's an amazing leader. He one, runs an amazing team that have collaborated, uh, collaborated weekly on a weekly basis, sometimes more than once a week, and um, uh, really runs a, a, a great ship, has a great vision. So, Aubrey, I'll turn this over to you. Uh, thank you, Jesse, and uh, it's nice to uh, meet everyone virtually. Um, my name again is Aubrey Arnold, and I am the Ryan White Program Manager for the Tampa St. Petersburg EMA um, Part A program. And uh, this, uh, today we're going to a little bit about who we are um, and our background and how we uh, came to work uh, with uh, RDE and the system that we have now. So we are a four county um, eligible metro area. Uh, we're comprised of four different counties and the two urban counties of Hillsboro, uh, which is where we are seated along with Pinellas are our two um, population centers along with two smaller, more rural counties, uh, Pasco and Hernando. We have an overall population in our area of about 3.1 million residents and um, about 14,000 of those currently are living with HIV and AIDS. Uh, the annual rate of newly reported cases in our area is at about 18% per 100,000 of the population. So right now, uh, just to also kind of give you a, a little bit of uh, info on the scope of our Part A program, uh, we have an 11, about, a, about $11 million in uh, our grant funds this year. And uh, because of the fact that we are in a non-Medicaid expansion state here in the state of Florida, uh, we are still focusing on primary care um, medications, medical case management, oral health, 
substance abuse and mental health. Um, that kind of comprises the basic menu of what we provide in terms of services. We also have a robust minority AIDS initiative program. And uh, after some reprogramming um, of the MAI a couple of years ago, uh, we are now focusing our attention on health education and risk reduction through the MAI. Um, our staff, I would say, within um, the Healthcare Services Department, which is where we're umbrellaed, um, is about eight people altogether. Um, all of us are funded, um, some full and more, some just a proportion of their time to the grant. And we actually have four different um, federal grants through HRSA uh, that we're managing right now. In addition to uh, our large Part A grant, we're also one of the uh, ending the epidemic targeted areas. Um, our grant for the new year for ending the epidemic is a million dollars. And then we also have a capacity grant um, that we worked with uh, through RDE to secure a year ago, um, which is also helping us um, expand our infrastructure. And then, of course, we also have, um, related to the COVID pandemic, um, a COVID uh, grant specific through the CARES Act, uh, which we're using to help support our service network with, um, which came rather unexpectedly in April. So we are working now with all of these. Um, we're still kind of working on building infrastructure around um, the newer grants that we have. And uh, it's, been, it's been quite a ride um, over the last uh, two years or so um, with all of this. But uh, again, with all that we um, have been dealing with, we're still doing quite well. Um, we can go on to the next slide, Jesse. So I think we're now going to show you. So the little video that you just saw um, was kind of an overview of our previous billing process that we were looking to get away with, uh, away from when we um, started working with RDE back in 2015, which has been about five years now. Um, we were working with a very um, much a manual paper-based system using CMS claim forms. And uh, the system that we were using at the time, uh, CareWare, did not offer any sort of billing component that we needed in order to automate uh, the claims process. So what we were really looking for um, at that time, and we'll talk about this a little bit more later in the presentation, uh, back, going back to 2015, was an automated end-to-end -end billing system. So we engaged um, before we found RDE with um, our procurement department and put together um, a procurement, an RFA, and uh, we had our a lot of key providers working with us on the scoring and uh, the assessment of that RFA before 
we contracted with RDE. So we very much wanted to involve our providers in the selection process for a new system. And we found that RDE really had um, the capability to provide us with what we were looking for that would work um, and fit within our vision of a total end-to-end -end automated system that moved completely away from paper and was electronic. Uh, next slide. Great, Aubrey. I feel like I can cover and this, but feel free to jump in. You know, we'll yeah, do Je tag team. Um, yeah, Jesse, if you want to go ahead and speak about, so we conducted a user survey prior uh, to launch of the system, and we wanted to show you some of the statistics, which we're later going to compare them with, um, with the before and after, so to speak, and this is the before. So go ahead, Jesse. Yeah, and also I just want to emphasize that, that um, this kind of stakeholder engagement is definitely a best practice, and I know it takes some time for folks to do, but definitely is worth the involvement. Um, you'll, you'll wind up with better feedback, uh, better direction, better priorities, and the provider community will um, uh, improve their, their sincere buy-in because they have been a part of the process. So I think the Hillsborough County team did a great job engaging their stakeholders. And we wanted to look at, you know, the process in terms of different dimensions of analysis. So the before, we try to compare the before and after and what we wanted to accomplish. Compliance was a, a big issue. We wanted to improve uh, compliance with program requirements. Also to look at the total time that these um, people spent managing the process um, and the paperwork steps and everything. And how did that translate also into the, the process and payment delays? So delay is another element that we looked at. Um, also the number of steps and linkages in the, in the processes, um, because every step and linkage that um, a manual step is an opportunity for a data quality issue or a mistake or something to fall through the cracks. So we wanted to try to automate um, as many steps and linkages as possible. And another dimension is how, how is the data quality? And that also relates to compliance as well, but we wanted to put in some really good data quality controls so that um, folks could rely on the data and feel confident in its, in, its, um, in its accuracy. Another element we looked at is uh, cost. What is the cost to um, the, the paper process, both the actual cost, the direct costs, and the hidden costs? And lastly, also, we wanted to make sure that the user experience, that this was a user-friendly experience and was not a barrier. Uh, any changes that we implemented were, were, um, were, were not additional burdens. Um, one of the things that we looked at uh, in this survey for the legacy system um, that we that the eCompass system replaced, and the, it's called E2 Hillsboro that replaced the legacy system. And one of the questions was, on average, how long does it take to determine eligibility for a new client? As you know, eligibility determination is very important, um, and it can be complicated, and there's lots of steps. And so, um, although these are relatively low numbers, less than an hour, one to two hours, two to three hours, you have to multiply that by the, by the two cycles every year by the number of active clients. So you have to multiply this by 11,000 each year. And the point here is that little things add up. These, these, these relatively small amounts really do add up over the course of a year. <clears throat> we also looked at um, you know, how long did you have to wait to get claims adjudication information from the county from the date of the, these paper CMS 1500 forms that were mailed to Minnesota or Washington for imaging. And we could see here that we went from a lengthy and inconsistent process, and we've, you'll see later on that we've got this down to less than one week after we launched. Um, another area we looked at was how long does it take you on average per week to resolve non-adjudicated claims that were sent to you by the county? So these are things where there might be a, a mistake in the claim or something didn't uh, meet the requirements. And we can see here that we went from manual intervention for non-adjudicated claims. Now it's almost non-existent after the eCompass launch. So a whole area just eliminated, which is really great. You'll see that later on. Um, we also looked at some of the, the costs associated with the paper-based claim forms. And we found that on an average 1,800 hours per year are spent across the EMA to complete and submit these paper CMS 1500 forms. Again, that's a lot of time that could be better spent with clients and, and on quality improvement activities, other more meaningful work. And there's all, over $11,000 on paper and shipping direct costs per sub-recipient 
which is over $90,000 in paper and shipping direct costs across the EMA. We summarized the user challenges that they reported back to us as, as this was an inefficient process, it was expensive. It took an average of five days and at most three staff members to submit these paper claims each month. There were not really efficient tools and support available to them and it required monitoring and fixes. And in terms of where we are today, I think we're gonna turn this over to Onelia. Hey, Jesse, thank you, yes. Um, so we got with our, all our stakeholders, of course, um, every single one, and we wanted to make things as more efficient as possible for each one and a lot more automated. Um, so we wanted to look at other aspects as far as making sure that we were compliant and having RSR data in the system. We wanted to make automation strong and make sure that um, there was a complete contract management tool and, of course, secure and, and an end-to-end -end electronic billing system. Um, we wanted to also have global consent across the EMA so that there would reduce duplication. Um, the client would only have to be in the system once, so that would reduce a lot of entry. Um, of course, having a, a robust quality management uh, tool for reporting capa uh, capabilities, um, and just a, a great data system overall that adapts to our needs. And that's one of the great things that we have with RDE is that they're able to adapt and make improvements as we go along. So how we met these needs was just, we have weekly um, meetings and discussions about the system and what we feel that would help our stakeholders internally, out, out externally um, with the population. Um, so we just sat, brainstormed, and that's when we collaborated with RDE and we then B2 Hillsborough came to life. Um, with the automation, we've reduced a lot of manual human error, um, it, which made it more efficient. It's just a couple clicks on, on some, some scenarios where you'll just click on um, Everything is like preset. You just make a selection, move on to the next question, and complete it as fast as possible. So um, a lot less time that you're having to go and search for things and, and key in or um, upload. So paperwork was reduced tremendously in this scenario, and, and there's less time. So the E2 Hillsborough timeline, the takeaway from the timeline is pretty much that from our final specs to actual uh, provider training was three months. And I, I think that was a great accomplishment between us and RDE to get that going and um, the program set up. I wanted to share one of the great um, uh, modules that we have with E2 Hillsborough, and that's the Automatic Client Eligibility Calculator. And it is an automatic algorithm that calculates eligibility dates. So there's no need for you to grab a calendar and count out six months out to the exact date. It's automatically preset for you. It's very clean and consistent across all the clients. Of course, uh, supporting documentation that's needed for verification is uploaded into our document tracker and is securely stored there. Um, we have eligibility plans um, that go along with our contract management that we've created for everyone to fall under for funding purposes. Um, and of course, that reduces a lot of staff time. All of this does. So going on to the next slide. Jesse, did you want to talk about that? Sure. Flow chart, yep. Sure, sure. One of the things that we did is um, a workflow and data flow analysis of the eligibility process both at the federal level but also taking that to the local level where we had to interface with a third-party administrator, a county IT department um, to process this, uh, these claims. It's claims-based billing and um, each one of these boxes actually blows up to another chart that looks like this. So it's a very complex, sophisticated uh, workflow and algorithm 
And we wanted to be very rigorous uh, with this so that we could do good testing and make sure that the end product followed all of these things for compliance, but also all the weird edge cases, edge cases that come by and you know people writing something down on the corner of a piece of paper. We had to make this tight and automated. And so uh, this was our, our roadmap to make sure that we covered every aspect so we wanted to share you uh, with a couple of snips of our um, eligibility calculator. So we pulled a client who is currently ineligible, and you can see that on the screen. And what it shows, if you click on the ineligibility, it tells you the reason for that client to be ineligible, what's missing on the recertification, um, no income uh, verification document. So once those uh, items are taken care of, then um, all the requirements are completed, and you can see then that the client then has the eligibility period presented. There are two other uh, buttons there. If you see, there's a history button, which if you were to click, it would display a history of the different um, eligibility, eligibility periods for the clients or any changes to it uh, with the audit report. Um, it allows you to see if there have been any changes um, to make the client eligible or ineligible or just any changes to the system. It's, kind of, it's an audit report. So it's, it's great to use. Yeah, we wanted to, we wanted to reduce the, um, the confusion over why is a client not eligible and let the system tell, tell each user exactly why and then give them the ability to correct it right away. And um, that's the idea is make it as easy as possible. With our contract, um, and grant management tool, we have integrated um, CPT codes and PIC6 codes as, as well as mo um, benefit modifiers to the system. And um, we have them set under each contract. Some of them are at a fixed fee, um, if that's how we contracted with the provider. Um, others are open at 100% acquisition cost and they're open, um, it's an open key to, for them to add the amount. Um, for, for each rate or for each service that was performed. So that, that allows um, a lot of flexibility. Um, it also, we have plans that we have in place for each contract that allows for funding. So um, some clients are eligible for Part A, depending on the race, they're also eligible for MAI funding. So um, that's one of the great things that we have with uh, the, our management tool, our grant management tool. Here's an example of where we would go and do a service entry and type in the procedure code and either enter the unit cost and you can see that it's already preset there with just the ability to enter the number of units and it automatically calculates the amount for you. And then there, as you can see down at the bottom, already a preset unit amount and you just go in there and also just enter the number of units. It's all auto calculated. You don't have to make any calculations on your own. Um, and it's very easy and time efficient, makes things quick. So this video shows the new version of the fully automatic and electronic billing process that we're currently using.
With that video, I wanted to mention the easy submit queue. Once a service entry is submitted, the, the providers or the subrecipients are able to go in there and make any edits before they actually submit it to the 837. Um, the billing supervisor is able to go and make edits. They're able to remove some things um, and be able to decide within a range which claims they can submit for, for payment once they've reviewed them. Um, so it's fully automated and electronic. There are no more paper claims. The 837 electronic claims file is uh, fully integrated with E2 Hillsboro. It's very easy claim submission process. It's efficient for fiscal monitoring. There's no manual effort. It reduces time cost. To, um, and I wanted to mention that providers are able to better reconcile. It's easier to reconcile because it's end to end. It's a full circle. They are receiving um, a check number in the file. Um, when they go pull up a claim, they're able to look up to see the check number or even a check date of when something was issued. So they fully know the status of a claim once it's been submitted full, full circle. Yeah, that's so cool. Well, we did look at some before and after analysis um, from this um, and exactly all the helpful things that you saw Anelia walk through. How did that translate into outcomes? Um, what's, what delays have been reduced, what time savings have there been. Um, and so we look here at the average claim adjudication and payment time for paid claims. And we could see that when the system was launched here, there was a noticeable improvement of the dark blues. That's what's in our control. And, if we, and this was actually a 300% improvement from 12 days down to less than three days to have claims adjudicated. So that's a great accomplishment. And if we look here at the percentage of claims paid within 45 days um, so that the county is paying um, uh, more quickly as a good partner, we went from 91.67 up to 99.35%, which is a really great improvement. And we look here at the percentage of claims paid exceeding the 45 day threshold. This is when the county would be paying um, later, and you could see some of them very late, 85 plus days, 64 to 84 days. So how can we help um, the system um, speed along these payments and make, make this uh, a better experience for funded agencies? And this was, in a, uh, there was two, two launches. One was the, the main launch of the system, and now we've got the end-to-end -end electronic billing. And you can see all the onerous ones are eliminated completely. And we've gotten a, a 1160% improvement of the percentage of late, late claims paid from 8.2% to less than 1%. So what a great outcome there as well. Another way to look at this is the percentage of claims denied. Um, and every time a claim is denied, that triggers a whole new cycle of paperwork. So if we can eliminate that, uh, reduce it greatly, that helps the whole process out. A lot, much less back and forth. So you can see visually here from, you know, when, when we did launch till now, that's a 231% improvement. We went from 18.9% of claims denied down to 5.7%. So that's a really another amazing uh, outcome from automation. Another aspect is how does this tie into the federal compliance reports? And the idea is to make these tools as user-friendly and as visual as possible. And that by having good data come in where the system puts controls of what it allows in, you get better data out. And so uh, one of the modules that benefited from this was the one-click RSR in E2 Hillsboro. And we've got a nice um, model here where errors, warnings, and alerts are displayed um, interactively. There's client drill down. So if a user spots a data quality issue, they can jump right to it and fix it. There's also um, a high level view of completeness and other data quality reports. And the idea here is we can transform something that you know, could be an annual burden into a data quality tool that's user friendly. So you could see here in the RSR module, um, the system has all the HRSA electronic handbook uh, warnings, errors and alerts built right into it. So there's no, um, there's no surprise when you go to try to upload a file. And what it also does is when you click on it, it'll aggregate all of the issues for one particular client um, to uh, be able to correct that all in one, one, uh, one go. 
So that's a nice little touch, a very nuanced touch where you click on that and you can take care of all the issues with one client. And similarly, all the completeness, we try to make things visual and interactive. So you can see everything at a glance and eyeball your data and get your data out in meaningful ways. And then Aubrey, if you'd like to talk about our pandemic. Uh, yes, I would. Um, we, you know, as everyone has been here um, within the care world and patient care, um, we've all been dealing with uh, the COVID pandemic since March. And um, we've had some challenges, but because of the fact that we were well positioned um, in terms of our data system, which Onelia has been explaining and Jesse have been explaining, um, we were already in a good um, position to meet the challenges with the pandemic, with COVID. And um, starting in March, um, a lot of our providers began offering, really ramping up their uh, telehealth. And uh, the, even though we had been doing it um, for many years prior to COVID, um, it really came to the forefront. And because of the fact that we had a system that um, was end-to-end -end and already completely electronic, it was actually very pretty seamless and easy um, for the providers uh, to move to this type of uh, world reality that we are uh, working from now. So one of the things that um, kind of came to our attention pretty early on was the fact that because of the fact that we are um, a codes-based uh, claims reimbursement system, we did not have um, a lot of uh, the modifiers that the CPT codes require for telehealth. And so what we started working on um, pretty, again, early on in the early phases of the shutdown with the pandemic was working with uh, the programmers at RDE to come up with some solutions for that. And so we, um, you know, began working with them on the, adapting the system and expanding it to include these telehealth modifiers. We really did it um, pretty quickly. Um, as you can see here from the uh, slide, uh, we identified the need um, in late March, and we actually had a prototype delivered, which I think was pretty extraordinary, on April the 2nd. So that was really not even two weeks went by, and uh, I think this is a great example of the partnership that we have with the programmers, how they listen to us, and how they understand our business needs. When you have um, a partner in the business world like this that can quickly interpret and identify what you need in order to transition your business and keep it seamless for your end users, um, it's, it's pretty remarkable. And so we really had no break in service. Um, our providers have been able to um, continue seeing their patients and clients. Um, eligibility has continued. Um, we've had a lot of uh, providers rotating in and out of their offices, which have not been fully staffed. Um, and again, a lot of folks have been working remotely, but again, because of this technology that we've had and that we've, the infrastructure that we've been able to create over the last five years, we were well positioned to meet the challenges of the pandemic. Um, we can go on to the next slide. And Jesse, did you wanna just maybe sum up here? Sure, sure. Yeah, the E2 Hillsboro system is, is really quite powerful in all its areas. And I think the Hillsboro County, the Tampa EMA is very unique in their complete end-to-end -end nature of electronic billing from eligibility determination and recertification to service delivery and billing. Um, and I think there's lots of great lessons learned there. It's, you know, I, we've got a new era with our uh, world of social distancing and this pandemic. So any tools that help support more electronic processing and less paperwork and less paper processing, I think goes a long way um, to reduce that, that sort of the, the, the requirements of uh, paper processing and also just reduction of administrative burden in order to um, better meet the needs of the epidemic and the pandemic. And so this end-to-end -end Ryan White Services billing and uh, database with the CPT coding and 837 is, um, is an electronic standard for 
processing claims and payments. Um, but if that's not relevant to your region, there are other ways you can, you can do this. It doesn't require 837, for instance. Either, no matter what, the robust client eligibility calculation that happens behind the scenes and that's automated is really powerful no matter what. That's an excellent uh, feature. This global consent process, there's lots of data sharing and, and client data um, sharing models throughout the country. Um, this global consent is absolutely one of them. Um, and having the system mirror your consent and privacy process um, is essential. So making sure that you're not sort of fitting into a box, but that the box fits around your needs. Linking that all to the contract and grant management, so all the dollars and cents line up and the reporting is solid. And again, uh, connecting that to the data quality checks to make sure that you've got high quality data going in. And if there's any uh, completeness issues, you've got very user-friendly reports to spot that and uh, take action on that. Um, uh, migrating from Careware was really um, an experience that benefited from years of working uh, with the data set. And um, it being a relatively standard format was, was very helpful. Um, so being able to make sure you can pull the data that you feel is clean over so you don't have to start from scratch is, a, is definitely something that should be baked into any kind of plans. Um, and as um, Onelia and Aubrey were saying, making sure that the system is adaptable to the needs. So this pandemic was, you know, <laughs> not planned in, um, but I think um, being able to have good partnership and, and be flexible and adaptable is something very key to try to look for in your, your partners. And um, of course, being secure is essential. Both, you know, I'm just dismayed by the number of breaches I see in the private sector across the country. And there are ways to take security very seriously. And I'm very proud of the team for doing such a great job uh, with all the security controls in place. We already talked about the secure hosting and the, and the advanced encryption called zero knowledge encryption. And um, the accomplishments, I think, are pretty clear. That um, the automated electronic submissions are completely paperless now. There's massive, demonstrable time, effort, and cost savings. The security is clear. The faster adjudication process and the less back and forth is really great. Um, you know, we're talking about less than 1% of human intervention. Um, the faster claims processing and payment turnaround time is, is really uh, wonderful for the subrecipients. So that they can get paid more quickly, uh, with their, you know, with, with some of the challenges that agencies face around the country. Any way that we can improve that is is very valuable, and to make sure that the program and department goals have been met. And Aubrey, would you like any, to comment on anything else about these accomplishments you've had? Well, it's interesting. I was just looking at the uh, fifth bullet point again regarding the turnaround time. And our most recent um, assessment of the administrative mechanism, which is still um, in or going uh, in process right now, it hasn't been completed, but it's in draft. We are actually turning around claims. I'm so proud of this statistic in less than 15 days now. So the numbers continue to improve. And uh, I'm just Considering where we've been um, over the last um, five years and uh, coming up with the concept and then um, implementing this new software within our EMA, I I'm, just, I I'm just completely overwhelmed with the amount of progress that we've made with the electronic claim submission process especially. Agreed. And we, we did look at um, some post-launch survey data um, it's still relatively early, but we've got some good information. Uh, we looked at how much time has E2 Hillsborough's automation of eligibility, notice of eligibility dates, and third-party administrator dates saved you compared to manual determination. And the process has been brought down to five to 10 minutes per client, which is um, a great savings there. We also asked uh, users what features in E2 Hillsborough uh, do you use and benefit your work activity? And the top ones are all the ones that we just spoke about. The eligibility determination is easy as the system tells me what data is missing. Automate, automatic NOE and TPA date generation happens for them. They're not calculating it and then hand entering it and then someone makes a mistake. That's all automated. And electronic claims submission um, so that they just press a button and get paid. Uh, the reports are also another uh, popular one so they can get useful and meaningful data out. 
Um, and then it's simple and clean design. They appreciate the common client consent, the technical uh, support, and some other items that they report uh, benefit them. And I, I really in, I really appreciate the county's uh, focus on on provider and end user satisfaction and incorporating their their feedback. And uh, this is in what ways have all these E2 Hillsborough features that you like helped you? And number one is save uh, my time because lots of things are automated that were manual previously, made my daily data entry job easier, reduced data quality errors and mix-ups, reduced effort for data cleanup, reduced agency expenses, for example, no longer needing to purchase and process CMS 1500 forms, easier to be compliant with county and HRSA needs. Uh, and I have not used any, oh, that was just the, the last one. <laughs> um, great. And these are some of the, the feedback, the qualitative feedback that we received. On the right, you can see um, user satisfaction scores. And this is a pretty unique process where our tech support reaches out to every user every year, ask them how they're doing with their system, how is the reporting meeting their needs, and how is technical assistance, support, and help desk. And if someone gives a, a, you know, a rating of less than 10, even if they say nine, we ask them, well, what can we do to make it a 10? And these get fed back up to the county for future prioritization or grant writing. And so it's a nice loop. And these are high, very high numbers for a government mandated data system. <laughs> these are not the norm for government mandated data systems. And some of the qualitative quotes really energize us because we work so hard on these. So it's great to hear in the words of users. For instance, in 20 years of work, this is the easiest system I've used. Billing process is easy to use. Great system to use. Thank you. Using E2 Hillsboro has been great. It is easy to navigate and very user friendly when entering services and patient information. Um, another one is looking at some of the features that have reduced some of the administrative burdens. And they report that has reduced my burden just by making things easier. And we are saving by not having to purchase paper 1500 claim forms, no storage of those, uh, those boxes, not having to keep folks away from the printer while waiting on hundreds of forms are spitting out and not trying to figure out where in the printing process things stop because of a paper jam. So these are little nuanced things that, you know, add up. Um, billing using E2 has to be the easiest process ever. I like that I can select which claims are submitted or just push through the entire month or date range. The reports that can be generated are helpful to reconcile, verify, and find any duplicates before you submit. The only claims we have had denied are because of input, user, uh, input errors by our staff. Processing time has been dramatically reduced and payments are received on average within 30 days of submission. And this is data we just collected in July. So we see that automated eligibility and electronic claim submission are each of Hillsborough's most popular features. More than half of users indicated that automation saved them time and that the system made their jobs easier. And we have an overall 92% uh, customer satisfaction with eCompass. And Aubrey, if you'd like to share some key points on your side. Sure. So that first bullet point, I think, about says it all. Um, we have very few complaints, if any, that I can think of in the last um, year or two working with this system. I know that we typically in the past, um, before we got to the point where we are with E2 Hillsborough, um, often fiscal staff from our subrecipients would contact either myself or others on the team. Um, you know, we're still waiting for payments. We need these payments to meet payroll, et cetera. I never ever hear any negative complaints or any sort of complaints about um, payments being slow or delayed any longer. And I know from my interactions with our providers that everyone is a happy camper for the most part. Um, you're always gonna have, you know, new folks coming on and uh, you know some staff turnover, but overall, um, everyone is extremely satisfied um, with this software. And some of the other key points here, um, you know, it certainly reduced administrative burden, allowing our providers to spend their time on other more important things. Anything I feel like I can do in my role as an administrator to uh, reduce the time and effort and the burden. Uh, which it takes to administer the Ryan White grant is a very positive thing for our providers. Um, it often leads to providers not wanting to do business with us. Um, we've heard that in the procurement process in the past that um, some of the reasons why folks are not that 
interested in being a Ryan White provider and a new provider is that the administrative burden is so high. So anything that we can do to help alleviate that is always a very good thing. And one of the things that I've spoken about um, over the last year or so with the RDE team is the fact that I feel like they really understand our business needs and our processes. And in order for any sort of project like this to really have its meet its full potential and impact, you really have to be on the same page. So being able to communicate and being able to get your business translated into a software product, into a, an outcome um, that benefits you and your subrecipients is, is, is a great thing. So we truly do speak the same language. I would say the last bullet point, um, I've also talked a lot about silence is definitely golden. And a lot of times, again, um, when you hear crickets in the garden, that is a good thing in, in terms of the <laughs> software functionality. And I, I think that about covers it. All right. Our future vision. And uh, Jesse, did you want to, I, I can go on, um, talk yeah, about keep, yeah, our, some of our do. plans for the future? Sure. Yeah, please and do. Uh, you can jump in as well. So we're looking at uh, a new project this year as part of our capacity building project for our technical assistance grant. Um, we're looking at uh, an EMR uh, integration project, which will actually pull data from a provider's EMR into E2 Hillsborough without, again, that um, data entry, that, multi that dual data entry that is so burdensome to providers. Um, we're looking at uh, possibly eligibility integration with Part B. Um, part, the Part B program in our area does use a different system, and we would love to try to get that consistent with the Part A, um, again, to reduce burden, because a lot of the providers that have Part B funding also have Part A funding. Um, so again, anything that we can do there to make it better and more efficient is a good thing. Um, we have some ongoing innovation strategies for efficiencies and cost savings, um, again, to achieve long-term system sustainability. And we're serving further populations under ending the HIV epidemic. Remember, we have this new grant, and RDE has been right on board with us in preparing for that and building our infrastructure. Um, we have the Care Continuum Dashboard. Um, those are some of the new dashboards that we've been able to launch under our National Technical Assistance and Training Grant over the last year, which we're very proud of. And really just the continuous enhancements that um, we work with, uh, with RDE and um, my internal team on an ongoing basis around. Um, a really good example of that is very recently we launched um, a new eligibility module, which gives our admin staff now the ability to fix eligibility records when we find that there's an error that has been made on the part of an end user. Um, we no longer have to um, try to figure out kind of unusual workarounds, we'll say, because of the fact that these records have to integrate with our um, third party administrator, with our claims adjudicator, uh, with our claims adjudication process. And so this new eligibility component has given us a lot of new features. And uh, that has also, I think, another good example of how um, the partnership between RDE and Hillsborough County government works so well and so effectively. All right, and also um, something on the horizon is the care continuum dashboard. Um, so the ability to have a, in one snapshot the entire care continuum and the ability to filter by uh, priority populations and sub priority populations so that we can see at a glance exactly for a region or for an agency um, their care continuum dashboard snapshot and also the ability to jump to um, any gap in, in that or if there's an issue with retention or viral load suppression you can click down and, and jump right into the actual client records to see is this a data quality issue or should I direct my efforts to try to intervene and um, maybe do something more intensive and focus on um, 
certain populations for certain grants. So it's a very powerful way to, at a glance, um, make the data usable and actionable right away. And this is a, a, a snapshot from our, our training a number of years ago. And I, it, the, really, the human element can't be overstated. There's lots of great systems and technology innovations, but that all stemmed from uh, the philosophy and approach and methodology of getting uh, these great human resources and minds engaged throughout the entire life cycle. Um, so, you know, being able to envision uh, new ways, brainstorm about where the bottlenecks are, where are the headaches, where are the hiccups, and then systematically try to go through each one of those. And it's that level of stakeholder engagement that I think was uh, really beneficial. And there's lots of great humans um, behind the scenes here at the county, at the funded agencies, and in the RDE team that have really contributed to this that you saw today. Aubrey, would you like to share some lessons learned or? Uh, sure, so as you can see here, um, and I think the, you probably picked up from the presentation, this was uh, a pretty complicated endeavor. It definitely was more complicated than what we originally anticipated, but again, because of a positive attitude and just kind of working through it piece by piece, we uh, were able to achieve what we were looking for. Um, there were external dependencies beyond software uh, implementers control, as there always are in any type of project like this. And I think it really helps to have a well-defined um, project plan. You have to account for risks and plan mitigation strategies together as a team. And again, I really think that's a key is the fact that you have to work collaboratively as a team to get through some of these um, challenges that come up. Choose your partners wisely. Um, being flexible is also very key and important um, and effective leadership. Teamwork and trust across more, multiple organizational units. And as anyone that works with, I think, grants or the Ryan White program in general can attest to, you really have to be able to kind of work across uh, functionality and you have to work across different pieces of an organization, regardless of whether you're in a small rural health clinic or managing a, an $11 million Part A program like we are for a large metro area. Really, the concept is the same, whether, again, it's small or large or somewhere in between. And, all, you know, Aubrey kind of glossed over the effective leadership part, but that's uh, him being humble. I think Aubrey was an amazing leader. And when you run into situations where you're trying to radically transform your work processes and have to interface with parties outside of your control, like a third party administrator, effective leadership is key. And Aubrey was an amazing positive influence. And um, that positive attitude he had was that he mentioned was absolutely key in getting through some hiccups and, and um, uh, Aubrey's leadership was, was really definitely an ingredient of success for this project. And I, and I wanna raise awareness of leadership in general. I think um, lots of these kinds of projects can really benefit from human-centered leadership. Um, some final thoughts on my end. Um, I, I think this was a really an amazing transformative project. It's, I, I, as far as I know, unique in the country. Uh, I'm struck by the relevance of this work um, with the pandemic and needing to work remotely. And I think this is a really good example of effective disruptive innovation to help end the epidemic through using data and technology to keep staff focused and free to work with their clients and patients and on quality improvement, um, to work remotely and, and to spend much more meaningful time with those tasks instead of paperwork. Um, and the emphasis of outcomes, being able to focus on, well, what is this going to accomplish? What will be, what will be the outcome? How can this save time, reduce delay, improve higher quality data, improve reportability, improve compliance, um, I think is, is, is a really great focus to have throughout the life cycle. And I think this really was a better experience. Uh, this model now a better experience for staff, for agencies. It's uh, more uh, efficient, faster, and really works towards reducing that administrative burden to free up these talented minds to work on more meaningful work. So um, really great job. And you know, how can we accomplish these ambitious goals? One bite at a time. 
And these are all the presenters' contact information. Thank you, Onelia. Thank you, Aubrey. Thank you. Thank you.